Thank you. So uh, my first question, actually this is only one question, but uh, when do I get my beta key? And, no, um, What's and your this, address? <laughs> What's that? What's your address? Okay, yeah, just uh, email it to me. I'll, I'll come meet you afterwards, don't worry. Right. Um, this is a PVP question. Uh, so what it looks like now is that you're trying to separate arena from the regular PVE aspects. Comparatively to previous versions where it's just you just jump in a game, you go kill people, uh, you trick them into maybe, hey, turn on the combat key and let's go fight. How's that going to balance with um, arena and PVE? Are you guys thinking about doing like separate skill trees or, I mean, how, how are we going to work that into it? Uh, is this uh, how are we going to balance PVP versus PVP? Well, I mean, in previous versions, if there's only like a couple classes really worth PVE and, or PVP in with. So in this one, it'd be maybe a little bit more beneficial if there's some more tweaks to PVP later on down the road when it seems like that wasn't addressed in previous games. Okay. I, if I understand the question correctly, it's, it's how, how are we going to make the other classes viable in PVP, make sure that they're all viable? That's the idea, but the, okay. I mean, realistically, I mean, the other classes just kind of fell by the wayside, and no one really addressed it, and PvP was just kind of pushed off to the side. Okay, and this well, one, it seems like it's going to have more of a, you know, a, a role in the game, at least in the arena. Yeah, well, it, we definitely, I mean, as I mentioned, we've separated PvE and PvP. There is not going to be any PvP in the PvE game, um, and that's intentional because pretty much all that was really, it was used for, other than the occasional, when the game first came out, there was some good experiences that came out of it. But after that, it was pretty much used for dueling, which we now put into the arenas, um, or griefing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really like griefing. That's a little secret, but... Um, and I griefed me plenty of people in, in Diablo in my time, and I apologize. Um, not really. Um, but uh, ultimately, our decision was, we really wanted co-op play, and we felt like any chance for griefing um, from a PvP standpoint hurt people's desire to want to play co-op together, and we we just couldn't abide that. So we've separated them. And how we'll make the classes all viable? Well, part of it is separating them also means we can tune and balance the game, PvP game separately than the PvE game, which makes it a lot easier to make sure that every class has something to do in PvP and that every class is, is useful and viable. Thank you. Um, hey guys, um, I think the game looks amazing and like, I think it's really awesome, but I'm just wondering, other than Kunstapart, where do you guys get your color palettes when you do your backgrounds and characters? Pat, you want to tackle that? Well, I think we really look at the colors that are going to make the most, you know, the ones that are going to get the best bang for the buck in the environment. Whatever the mood is, we're trying to sell. I mean, different colors have different connotations in different societies. Um, so we just really look for the ones that really sell what, what we're trying to do in that particular environment. There's also uh, an aspect of where we're trying to make things uh, different enough so that as you're playing the game, things are changing up. You know, you're not always stuck sort of in the same environment. So there's a lot of uh, care taken to sort of ensure that that's happening as well. So you guys are only playing like little slices here, which are awesome. But once you see the whole game, you'll see that what, we'll do, what we're doing is we're sort of changing things up and making sure that it's never quite the same thing. I think that uh, I think that I've learned on this project that there's story in everything, uh, even the tiniest bit of art, the smallest decision. If you progress from a red hued environment in the demo to the blue outdoors, there's a little something that you take away from that, and uh, definitely palettes uh, inform that. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Um, I was just wondering how you guys are going to um, handle resistance compared to D2. Um, well, the first thing we did was um, we changed resistance from a uh, flat percentage um, with, to uh, basically a rating. It works a little bit more like defense did and that um, it, it scales with the level of the monsters. So uh, it can grow a lot more. We don't have to basically go to Nightmare and uh, pull um, you know, resistance down. Um, it's a fairly broad question, though. Like, in a lot of ways, we're handling it the same. Um, resistance is still a big part of the game. Um, it's still, uh, it's, it's a big focus of 
your defensive building of your character in higher levels. Um, but sometimes when people ask that question, they're asking about like, are we doing like double and triple immunity type monsters and things like that? And um, we really are, right now our plan is to avoid that and instead go for high, high resistance monsters because we don't want to completely negate somebody's ability to hurt an enemy. We also diversify um, uh, damage types a lot more across the classes, but we still can't count on a class having a diversity of different damage types that they use. Jay, I bet they want to know if they're going to have to stack fire resistance. Are we going to have to stack fire resistance? Or any resistance going into any particular fight. Um, it's really hard to say at this point. I mean, there's some value to stacking resistances um, to acquiring different kinds, um, but it, it's really going to be based more off, again, it's kind of an in-game question because resistances are really more of an in-game stat. Um, so until we start building the in-game, it's hard for us to say exactly how we'll use it. Right now, we're kind of planning on using it the same, but we're going to look at it a lot closer when we get to the point of building it and hopefully address any issues that uh, Diablo 2 had. Thank you. Hey, guys. I'm wondering how uh, Diablo 3's PvP arena, if it will support multi-platforms? Support multi-platforms. As in, for example, rather than having the ground all even, you can have like different levels? Um, maybe. Um, there's certainly, we certainly can, I mean, it, we can do it. That's not a problem. We spe specifically chose not to do it because the game does not play always great when you do a lot of height variation. And Diablo is, is essentially a, in, in a lot of ways, it's a two dimensional game. Like, even though we have a 3D engine and you can move up and down platforms and things like that, um, if you shoot something that is higher or lower than you, essentially, on our side, we have to guess what your intent is. Um, and our guess is never perfect. So um, with our, our first arenas that we made, we found that it was just a lot more fun to have more of a level surface and not have to worry about that. Um, that being said, uh, we'll make more arenas and, and we'll continue to play around with that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matthew from Big Crits. I have a question uh, much about, you know, the destiny of certain characters. Like, in Diablo 2, you go back to Tristram and it's completely sacked. And, you know, I, I grew up playing Diablo 1 with my dad, so I got really sentimental and attached to Tristram. Um, and as I played throughout Diablo 2, you got implied destinies of the rogue and the sorcerer and what happened to them. Um, would it be... Uh, is there going to be something like that uh, concerning the other Diablo 2 classes in Diablo 3 where there's implied destinies about what happened to them? And will we uh, learn about, you know, Luke Gulane or how Karast has healed from what happened to them or the, sight, uh, the Sisterhood of the Sightless Eye? Will we hear about what's going on with them and now that they got their cathedral back? Uh, so for me, uh, I remember that when I played Diablo 2 and I found out kind of the implied destinies like you're talking about, uh, with the classes from Diablo 1. I thought that was one of the coolest things. Um, and I definitely, definitely, we're definitely planning to continue that. Um, specifically, like, you know, the Sisterhood of Sight Sightless Eye or what happened to the Necromancer. Um, you might see some things, but um, we're definitely, we definitely keep in mind what's gone before and drawn that and, and try to, uh, you know, show you how things have turned out. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I had a lot of fun playing ladder in Diablo 2, um, but it got kind of weird when you had some form communities come up with their own currency, and then when ladders reset, they wouldn't actually reset you know, the forms that weren't part of the game. So it became kind of hard to play competitively on the ladder. Um, if you weren't part of these forms and, and had currency and stuff, it, it came really hard to, just to play with only the game open. You had to like, alt-tab out and stuff. What's the question? Well, uh, sorry. Uh, are you going to like address that? I mean, I, I know it's hard for you guys to try and deal with like third parties' problems, uh, but is, is there a way? It kind of goes to your economy, how you want to have one solid currency, um, and how you can maybe address these kind of third party problems. Well, I mean, we we're always trying to address any kind of uh, any kind of third party group that basically does something that we feel hurts the overall gameplay of the game. We try to do what we can to correct it. Um, so for us, the answer is really most likely going to lie in how we handle the trading issues. Um, and so since we haven't decided exactly how we're going to do that, 
Um, it's hard to kind of comment specifically on that, um, but it's definitely an issue that we're aware of and that we want to address. Thank you. The guy is really tall. Um, sorry. Uh, the question I had, and I think it's probably the most important question and the question that all Diablo fans wants to know, since my previous question was already answered, will there be a cow level? So I'll take this one. In, um, in Diablo 2, there's, there's a, a feature called the chat gem, and it will actually answer your question if you pay attention. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> How you doing? Um, real quick, I love you, Destiny. Um, for you guys, I think that the changes you have made over the last couple of years here playing the beta is absolutely amazing. My actual question pertains to the new Demon Hunter and the choice of double crossbows. What gives? Like, I can understand one of them, maybe one with a multi-shot, but what about like a sidearm or something? Like, two single crossbows just kind of seems a little uncreative. <laughs> I think it, I think on, it seems kind of awesome be, myself. Brown's turning ugly. You might want to make a run for it. Um. You don't have to use those. You, you can use all kinds of stuff. She's, she's yeah, got crossbows and bows. But we love them. We think that they're great. We think that it brings... Uh, an awesome, uh, thank you. Uh, we think it brings a, a, like an added dimension. Uh, you haven't seen like John Woo kind of uh, action in a, uh, in a Diablo hero before. And uh, um, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to drive you into a particular game style, but, but you know, for her, her own unique class of weapons, please someone jump in if I'm wrong, but I, I think that, that this really speaks to who she is. She's, you know, she's techie and she's, uh, She's trained, she's, she's practiced in things that uh, other, other people in the world haven't seen before. Maybe there's another well, one-handed crossbow out there, you know, but uh, I think the demon hunters maybe have that tech locked up somehow. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, my question would be, since y'all are emphasizing PvP abilities and PvE abilities being completely different, is there any way we're going to get dual specs so that if we want to focus more on PvP, we're not going to be screwed for PvP as well. Well, the, the point there is we don't want to screw you for PvE. Our focus is on PvE. We don't want to get distracted. We love PvP. We love what we've done with it. But we don't want it to become such a distraction that we, we counterbalance what we're doing in PvE. So that's always going to come first for us. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to ask more about the artisans. I know that you can level them up, but I was wondering, you gave them all this gold to get them cool crap to make the caravan look better. Are they going to be giving you any sort of like reduction in prices of lower level stuff out of appreciation? Because otherwise, without you, they'd still be dead, and the Black Spice Fire would be dead, and the town would be destroyed. So, I mean, I would like a little appreciation here. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll give you a discount. Just you, though. <laughs> Nobody else. I mean, uh, it, it's really, you know, it's a logic issue versus a gameplay issue. So, um, logically, they would give it all to you for free, and everyone would give you things for free, and you would swim in uh, donuts and happiness forever. Um, but the truth is we want an economy. And so, because we want an economy, it's logical that you would pay someone for their services. And so, you pay them, we get gold out of the economy, you guys get a currency to trade with, and everybody wins. Except for that donut thing. Nobody, nobody gets that. There's no donuts in Diablo. No, I just threw it down. BlizzCon exclusive, no donuts. Thank you.